Hello. This video is about the H pattern shifter I made. Here we have the final version I made. It uses magnets and a linear bearing design with Hall effect sensors to detect position. In this video, I will show how I came up with the design, then show off a couple versions I made, show how to make the final version, and finally, explain the code and some things to keep in mind if you decide to make one for yourself. This is part 3 of a challenge that I have been doing to build all of my own sim racing gear from scratch in order to win the My Summer Car Rally with all my own gear. Part 1 was about the pedals, and part 2 is about the building of the frame of the rig. You can check out both of these videos in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into it. Here's a quick disclaimer. In order to start this design, much like the pedals, I wanted to start somewhere familiar. I took apart the Logitech H pattern and learned the concepts behind the shifter mechanism. To explain, let's split it up into the two needed directions of motion. Okay, so starting with the side to side movement, a return to center function is needed. This is accomplished by using a torsion spring. So, if you were to rotate the green piece to the left, the spring would contact yellow here and provide force to return the green piece to its original position. And if you were to go the other way, the same thing would happen. The next function needed from the side to side movement is to be able to hold the shifter in position when it is on the left side of the H pattern or the right side. That way you can't jump from first gear into third without returning to neutral first. How this is done is to use some feet coming out from the green piece that interface with walls featuring some special slots. These slots allow the feet to pass through the slot hole when the shifter is in neutral, but keep the feet locked from rotating back to center when it is in a gear. For the forward to back direction of movement, there is no return to center functionality needed. Instead, it is only necessary to have some way to lock the shifter in the up, middle, or down positions. This is done using a few holes, a wall bearing, and a spring. I made a test print in order to try this out. Please ignore the flexure of the handle. In a real design, this wouldn't happen. So, knowing what I know now, I went ahead and tried to build my own version of it. I planned on using mostly 3D printed parts, so a lot of my pieces would have to be much bigger than they were in the Logitech design. I eventually ended up here and decided to go no further. I think this would not be that difficult of a design if metal were an option, but it is definitely tricky with 3D printed material. One of the best things I've learned so far in doing projects is that sometimes it's okay to abandon an idea that you've put a lot of work into. Fortunately for me, in my frustration, I happened to come up with a really cool idea on how to get it done. The new idea was to use a linear bearing concept with channels in order to select gears and using Hall effect sensors to detect the position of the handle. As soon as I thought about this, I realized it was the perfect way to move forward. So, I quickly modeled something up on this idea, just to see if it was feasible. And here's what I settled on for the first iteration. Before I did anything else, I wanted to make sure my printer could handle it, so I printed the most complex piece first. I was a little scared, my Ender 3 has definitely seen better days, but it was able to handle it just fine, and I'm really happy with how it came out, so I continued. Next, I printed a handle and set it up to see if my idea of using Hall effect sensors would work. So it wasn't perfect, but based on this, I knew there was potential and that interference could be fixed with better wiring and better code. I finished out the design as a proof of concept without the Hall effect sensors, and here it is completed. Next, I made a quick list of changes to make for the V2 design. The first change was to widen the gear selection channel to give more room for the user to change gear. Also, I tapered the section cutoffs to make changing gear smoother. The next change was simply making the outer diameter smaller in order to reduce print time. Then, I added a mounting scheme so I could actually attach this to my rig. 
The fourth important change was to taper the overhangs to smoothen up the gear changes. Next, I adjusted the way the hall sensors were mounted. And finally, I tried to get fancy with cable routing. Okay, so now knowing what I want to change, I modeled it up and started building it. I found that the new positions for mounting the Hall Effect sensors worked a lot better to isolate the gear. I went ahead and finished up the construction, and here we have the completed product. I was happy with the changes I made, but this version actually ended up feeling less smooth and less satisfying to use. I think this was because I did not sand it enough, and I didn't apply lubricant as I should have. Nonetheless, this was still a step forward, but I knew I had to make one more iteration of this design. So, the changes I made to V2 were minor, but important. I added more space to hold the cabling for the hall sensors. I flattened the bottom of the housing to make it more stable. I used different bolts to attach the handle. And I decided to forego the cable routing. It was kind of a dumb idea. Okay, so once again, I modeled up the new changes and got to printing another round of new pieces. This time, I made sure to pick better colors. Now that I have a full set of freshly printed pieces, I want to show how it's made. First thing we want to do is break off all the support material, which can be kind of tedious. Be careful not to cut yourself. I've got so many nicks and scars from breaking off support material, it's unreal. The next thing we'd like to do is to sand the surfaces that will be sliding against each other. I first use 120 grit, then 400, and finally 600 grit to get it really smooth. I really had to sand quite a lot to get the right feel. Uh, we'll be using lubricant later, so it's hard to tell if you're getting the right finish, but trust me, it's quite a bit of sanding. We also want to make sure to sand the inner surfaces that the handle will be sliding against. This is actually our most significant source of friction in the design, and the most important to be smooth. The lubricant will also help the most here, so it doesn't need to be perfect. The next thing I did was to solder up all of the six Hall Effect sensors. I left the power and ground wires shorter than the output, as I will tie all of these together. And there we have six of them soldered up. I used heat shrink to isolate the pins, and I went ahead and super glued them into the end caps. Okay, so this next part is super important. I used this lube on the design in order to get it feeling nice and smooth. You should be using something that is safe with the type of plastic you're printing with, and also it's important to get lube that is of a jelly-like consistency, not a thin liquid like WD-40. I used a paper towel and spread the lube all around the contacting surfaces. I made sure to use extra in the gear selection channel. When you get a chance, super glue in the magnets into the handle and the corresponding pieces. For ease, I had north poles facing outwards everywhere on the handle, and then oppositely oriented magnets in every intended mating magnet on the non-handle parts. The last step is to finish the wiring. I sent everything to a 9-pin D-sub for convenience. Okay, so let's talk electrics. I used analog Hall Effect sensors, which could be a really important detail in this design. I personally haven't used digital ones, but I cannot guarantee they will work for this. I'm only sure that analog will work. Anyways, if you haven't used Hall Effect sensors before, they're really cool and simple. Basically, you provide power and ground, and then on the third pin, it outputs a voltage corresponding with the strength and orientation of the magnetic field that the sensor is in. So, here is the basic circuit for the H pattern. Note that the rectangles with numbers inside represent splices, and the microcontroller I'm using is an Arduino Micro. And here's the circuit with a 9-pin D-sub connection inside. And finally, I added two switches, one of them for reverse, and the other is a sort of safety switch to stop sending signals to the computer. Alright, let's talk about the code. I modified the pedal script, um, so I'm going to be skipping over all of the detail for that. I did remove the LED functionality, so if that's missing, that's why. Um, but to start, we're going to define all of our pins that we're going to use for the gears, and then we're going to define the pins that we're going to use for the kill switch and reverse switch. Uh, we're going to import the keyboard library, which is what we're going to be using for our H pattern. 
Uh, we're going to start a couple variables here that will become important later, so we'll bring them up again. Um, next, uh, we want to set all of our pins to be inputs. Uh, we want to begin our keyboard object, and then I'm going to scroll past the pedal code here, and here we start again for the gears. Uh, so we want to analog read all of the values from the gears, and then we want to digital read all of the values from our two switches. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the kill switch is engaged. Because if it is, then we don't want to do anything else. So I set the state variable to P. It's just a character I chose to represent the kill state. Um, it's unimportant other than that. Um, so if the kill switch is engaged, we don't want to do anything else. So we're just going to set the state to P. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the reverse switch is engaged. And if so, we're going to set the state to 9. Uh, and then if the reverse switch is not engaged, we're going to go through and we're going to check every single gear to see if the Hall effect sensor is indicating that there's a magnet really close. Um, so this will loop through and it'll also check if no gear is engaged. And in that case, we can send a neutral uh, signal to the computer. Um, but that concludes our, our reading loop. Um, Next up, we have the decision-making loop, which is the more important part. So this is where we have to choose what to actually send to the computer. Um, so the first thing we're going to check is, OK, is the state equal to what it was last, the last time this loop ran? If so, we're not going to do anything because the shifter has not changed state in any, in any sort. So there's no reason to change what we're doing. Um, so the next thing we're going to check is if the kill switch is engaged. And if so, we're going to release whatever was last pressed. So um, this keyboard object will just continually be sending signals. And it's possible to get stuck so that your PC is always like outputting numbers. And the kill switch will save us from that, from that situation. So um, if the kill switch is not engaged, then what we're going to do is we're going to release whatever was last pressed and then we're going to press the new state that we want to we want to send to the pc um, and then we set last to the state that we just sent so that the next time this loop runs it knows what gear it was last in and whether to change state um, so yeah uh, that's that's the code um, let's go try it out all right, let's hop over to the van and try this out. Ah, what a beautiful day. The Satsuma is still waiting on some parts, so it'll have to be the van for now, but that'll be sufficient to show off the, the shifter. Let me just uh, hop in here. All right, so I skipped over mapping the pedals. Let's just focus on the shifter for now. Okay, so let's open the settings. The first thing to note is the mapping for the individual gears. I have them mapped to the same keys that are sent to the PC by the script when a certain state is detected. So right now the kill switch is engaged and the shifter does nothing. But if we go ahead and flip that kill switch and then shift into gear, boom, it's detected by the PC. And as you can see, it's working for every gear. So let's go ahead and flip the reverse switch. And there we go. We've got reverse. So now we know our device is working properly and we're good to go. I'm again really happy with how this turned out. It feels very nice for what it is and it even makes the pedals feel a lot better as the designs kind of coming together. I hope that this video was enjoyable and educational and that you got something out of it. Please leave a like and comment, I would greatly appreciate it, and it would help me know if people like this sort of thing. Critiques and suggestions are also welcome. If you decide to make one for yourself, I wish you the best, and you can always reach out and ask questions if you want some clarification. This project wasn't perfect, but nothing is. I'm happy I did it, and I'm excited to move forward with my new designs. Next is going to be the handbrake. And following that, I may start the dreaded force feedback wheel, but there may be videos before that. It might take me a while. Also, if you haven't, be sure to check out the pedals video in the description below.
that's it for me. Until next time, goodbye.